Hey, let's talk about all of this stuff. Joining us now, David Dietz, Scott Martin's with us, Liz McDonald, <laughs> Ashley Webster. We're going to start with Apple's big warning. All right, yeah. Scott, uh, what, in your mind, in your interpretation, uh, is this about Apple? Is it about China? It could it be about both? It's both. Um, and that's the tough part here, Charles. It's not like if you fix one problem, all of a sudden Apple's problems go away and the stock goes back up. I mean, you know, one thing we talked about on the show for years and years and years really is how Apple was going to deal with competition, how they were going to roll out multi-product lines, right? Like the services division, like the watch, for example. And I think by and large, you know, how about the cash position, by the way, they have on, on, on file, which is, you know, a couple hundred billion dollars, give or, give or take a few billion here and there that they could have used, by the way, to buy some things. And, you know, maybe not Tesla, maybe not Twitter, maybe not Netflix, but, you know, some other companies that could have helped them stay in the lead that they did not do. So the reality is this, you know, China is, yes, a problem because of the fact that we've started seeing the data come out of China. We've seen the stock market in China do terrible, which is a predictor of how the economic situation is there. But Apple itself has a problem as a company. And I think Tim Cook has a lot of things to fix here if he thinks this thing's going to resolve yeah, itself. Yeah, I, I think Scott is right. There's a structural business model problem for Apple. It's not just China. It's, you know, a, a, a Tim Cook saying, ooh, our services revenue is growing like gangbusters. The reason investors are hitting the ground floor button on its stock there is because, number one, it doesn't break out the different components of its services revenue. Mm -hmm. And we have Netflix saying, you know what, if you're a subscriber to Netflix, you don't have to go to Apple's iTunes right. store to buy Netflix. Right. So companies are saying, we're going to circumvent Apple's iTunes store and other services Maybe. and not pay Apple the mm -hmm. fees for doing so. So, you know, I think he's got a structural business model problem. There's no category killer like the iPhone coming up, you know, miss the, uh, the ball on, uh, you know, the Apple Siri taking on uh, Amazon's and Alexa and more. Has, has and more. So yeah. let's just say there's some, crack, there's some cracks in the Apple's halo. Absolutely, yeah. Charles. So the fundamental problem for Apple is that they are a hardware maker. That's where they get nearly 70% of their revenues. And the history of hardware makers is fraught with success. And then people move on to the next thing. I can remember my Motorola, then my Nokia, then my uh, BlackBerry. Now I got the iPhone. We will not be using the iPhone in five to ten years from now. And the question is, how are they going to replace that? It's not just China, too. There's been a lack of carrier subsidies. That's gone down. The replacement cycle has gotten longer and longer. Right. And why, why, why do you want to replace your phone when the new one doesn't have that many more features? The battery issue costs yes. a lot and as well. And the upgrade but, to you know, your battery is getting cheaper and cheaper. Because they, you know what, there might have been something unscrupulous about or, the whole battery and, lying and, in the and, first place. And why pay $1,000? Plan obsolescence. Right, yes. and why pay $1,000 exactly. for a new iPhone when you just get a $28 new battery for your old right. iPhone? No, Get back to what you said, David, because it's interesting. At one point, Nokia was the most valuable company in all of Europe. Uh, at one point, BlackBerry was the most valuable company of Canada. And, and you know, Emac made probably one of the most pressing uh, points yesterday during our show that no one really caught. She, oh, she wanted out loud about Apple's cheap valuation. You know, every time, you know, so many analysts come on TV and they say they like a stock because it's cheap. The P.E. ratio is low. But isn't sometimes a P.E. ratio low? Because it should be low. Well, absolutely. And, of course, you also look at price to sales. It's close to three, which is above the S&P 500. So the good news is they have $125 billion in cash. The bad news is what are they going to do with that? If they go and buy back stock, people will criticize them for no longer being a growth company. If they go out and buy another company, well, look what happened to Bristol-Myers today when they're buying Celgene. Yeah, but it's only down three bucks, and it's a mixed deal. I think if it's all cash, they'll be okay. I, 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 I'm Tim Cook. I'm not afraid of being criticized for trying to, to buy my way uh, with all that cash. What are they going to do with the cash? Buying back the stock? Is yeah, it, you make IBM bought back nothing. their stock for years. Scott, IBM bought back their stock yeah, for years, and, and all they did was lose money. Apple lost $9 billion on their buybacks last year. They fired people, and they lost their position within this space. Shouldn't they be focused on their business and trying to... If, if I had $120 billion, I'd buy my way to the top. That's what they do in sports. <laughs> I, yeah, they do that in sports, Charles, and it works. I mean, look, look at the Chicago Bears, for example, right behind me. So, you know, that's the thing. I mean, Never you, you got to figure that. Yeah, I've heard of them, too. You know, and unfortunately, as a Vikings fan, I hear about them all the time. Here's the problem, though. Like you said, you know, they've blown a lot of time that they can't get back. Now, the, the time's not gone for good, but they did waste a lot of time not doing anything. I think Siri's a great point. I mean, I talk to text all the time. I have Siri call people, but forget about having tell, telling her to do other things for me because she can't even still understand me after we've right. had this relationship right. for like eight years. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's like counseling for this. <laughs> there but, 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 you know, also, um, you know, they, they've got a big install base. Um, here's the thing that the audience should understand. Right now, 
uh, considering all the different uh, analyst actions this morning, your average target still on, on this stock is 198. On Monday, it was 215 dollars. So Wall Street still hanging in there to a degree. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, the bullish case is you got a 2% dividend yield. That's growing 10% a year, but a 5% per year stock buyback. That's about 7%. That looks pretty good versus 2.65. What they need to do is have an Apple Prime. Somehow they develop more services bundled in with their iTunes subscription, bundled in with the iCloud and get $100 Again, a year Again, taking advantage of that installed base and truly having Apple Halo that goes beyond trying to sell more Macs. Let me ask right. you about the other big news today. <laughs> uh, Robert Kaplan saying that uh, the Fed should hold off on raising rates for a couple of quarters. I thought even more important was this taking $50 billion out the economy every month, that they should reassess that. Yeah, well, I think that's the right move. You know, the question is for investors, of course, is, is all this monetary policy actually the lag? So the question is whether the interest rate hikes from last year, they won't stop, you know, depressing the economy for the next six to, to nine months. And that, that's the concern. And of course, will that be enough to offset the weakness in China, which is the second largest economy? Uh, Scott, what are your thoughts? Yeah, there's a lag time here, and, and it's really a tough thing, you know, but like, look what happened today, guys, with the ADP uh, payroll report. Now that number looks like it's, what, 270? And I know we don't right. have the, the, the government number tomorrow yet, but gosh, if that data stays warm, let's say, on the stove here, at, you know, a couple hundred thousand with some wage growth at 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 percent, that's going to give the Fed the lead blocker, to go back to your football uh, analogy, Charles, about that's going to give the Fed the lead block to at least not reduce the balance sheet, but right. maybe continue the rate hike path that they've been on because the that's data said. still yeah. supports at least a tightening. You know, the, right. I think the market could accept that. I think the market's having trouble with the idea of being an automatic pilot, uh, doing this experiment of taking about $50 billion in accommodation every single month in addition to, uh, you know, rapidly raising rates. I, I think the market's fine if it's data dependent and if it's 271,000 jobs and 3.2 percent wage hikes uh, you know what if you want to go 25 basis points you have a lot more room as opposed to just saying hey we're, we're on automatic so one uh, so one uh, and done for 2019 because that's what right Fed now the market's saying well none, Fed, right? fund, Fed fund futures are saying none like right. And the dot plot right saying, too. Yeah. So there's, some, there's a definitely discrepancy there. So here's the thing about the ADP report. Remember, employment is a lagging indicator. And so, you know, that does not mean that we're not headed towards weaker times. Of course, the other thing we need to look at is what is the wage growth? Because it's not so much having full employment is whether the wage growth is going to bleed into higher inflation. Right. The Fed should not be in the business of derailing the economy because people are getting jobs. If that's their mandate, then I beg <laughs> Congress true. to step in right now and figure this thing out. Uh, Overall, uh, Scott, what do you, you know, I know you like gold. Gold's been doing pretty well. What are you making overall of this market? Yeah, this market still psychologically, Charles, has a lot of problems. Now, I think the good news is we're getting to a valuation level. Gosh, guys, it's somewhat fair here. I mean, I do think that if you, you get $172, let's say that's our estimate, by the way, give or take a penny uh, of earnings this year in 19, you put a good multiple on it that's fair, again, a 14 or 15, we're about where we should be. So I do believe, though, psychology is going to play a big part in how the market right. behaves in January, which means we could see more drawdown, of course. I'm getting the wrap, but real quick, David, yes. the stock you like, just tell us that. because uh, Applied materials. AMAT. Chips are going into everything. You're getting a great dividend, um, and the secular tailwinds behind chips are not going away. I wanted to give you a chance to get that on the record. I love when the guests come on and they give us names we know, not emerging secular stocks uh, on the dark side of the moon. All right. Hey, David, Scott. <laughs> You guys are fantastic as usual. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.